What is up guys, Apathy back in the building today with another video and today I'm going to be doing a World War 2 class setup respawn video for a lot of people who've been asking me in my stream, been asking me in Twitter and stuff like that and I wanted to help you guys out, you know I do tip videos and stuff like that and you know, I got the classes, I got the classes ready for you and I'm going to show you and let's start the World War 2 ground videos man, I hit 100k which is freaking awesome, thank you guys so much, I actually want to upload something about that but I haven't yet but thank you so much for helping me and supporting me hit 100k subscribers, that's what been one of my goals for a long time and today I'm going to help you guys out for helping me out, thank you so much, so we're going to start off with the ARs now. I have a lot of stuff to show you guys. I got two AR classes. I got three subclasses. And I'm going to go pretty in-depth. You know you know me, man. You know these past class setup videos that I always do. I go pretty in-depth, explain a lot of stuff. And, you know, I've been playing the game a lot. I've probably played like 30, 40 hours already in just two days. No, that's not like two and a half days or so. So I'm going to be really showing you guys a lot of good things. All right. So first, of course, you have the division. Then you have the basic training, which I'll be showing you guys some combinations, some stuff you can do. Uh, for AR, mainly you want to use the infantry. And here's why. You got the rifle bayonet. Now, if you don't know what that is, boom, you get to knife people. If a sub guy rushes you and, you know, you have the AR, you know, sometimes maybe it's a struggle bit for that close range engagement. Boom, knife his ass, get him. You get also the primary attachment, which is really crucial. Basically gives you another attachment. And for an AR, that's really helpful because ARs do need a lot of attachments. You got the extra magazines, nothing too crazy, but obviously that ammo helps. And the most important thing about the infantry is that you move faster while aiming down sight. Basically stock on the AR, which is really, really helpful. You know, just when you're in the head glitch and stuff like that, it just it works really well. So then for basic training, we got Hunker. If you don't know, Hunker is basically flag jacket. It's really useful and, you know, especially if you're getting naded a lot. Now, this this nade situation will only mainly happen in hardpoint. Obviously, you can get naded any game type. Useful in search and store as well. But it'll mainly happen only in hardpoint where you might need this on the AR. Usually, the AR is laid back, anchoring, you know, sitting back in most game types or sitting in the heady or sitting at the top of building. So getting aid is getting aided isn't always gonna happen, but it's good to be, you know, just careful and always be prepared. So this is just an infantry hunker class. You got the bar, which in my opinion is the best AR in the game right now, competes with subs close range pretty well, and it's just a dominant AR overall. The only problem it has, it has a 20 bullet ca uh, capacity, which isn't the craziest thing. Like 20 bullets, like if you miss some bullets, you know, you might have to reload early, but it melts, it kills really quick. So usually that's, I guess that's a way of them balancing it. Maybe they put like two more bullets in, it would be a good thing. And then you also have the FG and the STG, which in my opinion are the two other good ARs. Uh, the STG used to be the best AR, you guys know in the beta, it was the melt machine. Uh, it got nerfed recently. It's not the best AR anymore. It still can compete. It's still a pretty good AR. But in my opinion, the bar is the best right now. I really haven't tried the FG too much. I heard it's really good. We have There's some pro players using it as well. Uh, they said it's good. But a lot of people and mainly everyone knows the bar is just the best gun in the game right now. And of course, the best AR in the game. Then we got the machine pistol. Best pistol. These two are pretty trash. Um, do not use these. The machine pistol is basically like a mini sub machine gun. It's just really effective. And of course, I use extended mags. You can use steady aim or extended mags. But... For your AR, I think it's just good to have extended mags, get that five extra bullets. Only has a 10 bullet clip, so it runs out pretty quick. Extended mags help, helps you definitely like ensure that one kill or maybe even get a two piece somehow. And of course, the best nade in my opinion, the sticky grenade. Uh, this grenade is really good. You can use frags if you want, but I prefer the sticky grenade. It's, it's powerful, it's quick, and it's easy. So for the next class, we have another bar class, which is very similar, very, very, very similar. We got another bar class, but with primed. Now, basically, what primed is, it's OP'd. In a way, it's good. It's good. It gives you another primary attachment. So, it's basically infantry. It gives you an attachment. And on top of that, you flinch less one shot. If you did not know, primed, like, that flinching thing is actually pretty effective. Like, if you shoot someone and someone shoots at you and you get shot, you know, you jump gun, your gun jumps a bit and, you know, recoils a bit. Uh, not recoil, but, like, it flinch, you flinch, it jumps a bit. And you notice it like it's nothing crazy but you notice it when you use primed and you get shot at and you're shooting at someone your gun barely bounces it's almost a laser like it's a very 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 minimal bounce so primed could be really good especially on the ar when you're trying to beam someone or someone shooting you know one v one gunfight like mid-range long range and it could just be really effective and now i have grip advanced rifling quick draw reflex sight i never got to attachments but now i am and the reason i don't have um in this one i don't have quick draw it's because quick draw isn't really necessary right as an AR, the thing is about, let me explain this as well to you guys, because some of you may not know, quick draw does not affect time out of sprint. If you did not know, time out of, out of sprint is a little bit slow. So nothing, there's nothing, there's no dexterity like in Black Ops 2, where, which it helps that. There's nothing in this game that helps that. Quick draw, all it does 
is if you're walking or you're you're just standing still and you aim in it aims quicker that's what it does as an ar you're not going to be sprinting out a lot you're not going to be running around everywhere like a maniac you're going to be pre-aiming a lot you're going to be you know pre-aiming your corners you know it's it's a different play style so quick draw isn't really like necessary necessary on this game especially you know on the ars it's just it's not so you can get away with running just grip and advanced rifling and a red dot and this is a really good class to use um, even using a full metal jacket, FMJ is really good on maps. So you can wall bang a good map. It's like Gibraltar, where there's a lot of walls. You can wall bang the walls. If you don't have FMJ, the damage is like kind of minimal. If you have FMJ, it's a little bit extra, and it can FMJ can really help on that map. So that's a definitely something you could change with advanced rifle. You could put FMJ instead of that for that map. But on this class, I have four attachments. Quick draw isn't really necessary. Like I said, you don't have to run it. But if you feel like if you're running this class, like a really strong four attachment AR class that you shouldn't really lose that many gunfights just because how stacked it is. Um, but something you can get away with it. Maybe instead of quick draw, pull from out of jacket. If you think the 20 bullets is a little bit too little, put on extended max, 30 bullets. You know, you could get you could switch for these two, I think would be my opinion for quick draw. If you feel like you need a quick draw, then if you run this class, make sure to put on quick draw. And of course, you have the machine pistol and the nade. Now for my next class, which is the subs, because you know I'm a subs in. You know, that's what I do best, run a submachine gun. You're going to notice something different. I only have PPSHs. Now, let me explain this to you very quickly before I continue uh, with the classes. The M1928, aka the Thompson, it's effective. Every submachine gun in here is effective. They're viable. But the PPSH is just a more consistent, better submachine gun overall. Now, the Thompson, very, very good close range. Medium to long range, it struggles a bit. And that's a big issue, especially in, in a competitive, you know, just play style. Like, you need to gun sometimes a mid-range PPSH or a long-range AR. And PPSH has a chance. Thompson, you know, it, it, it shreds sometimes. Like, from long range, you hit those shots. And, yeah, you can do it. But it's not always going to happen. It has a weird recoil sometimes. And I've been using it a lot. And I love the gun. But it just has that recoil that kicks really weird and you just you just it's hard for you to hit those shots very consistently so you can use the thompson you know maybe if you like it maybe for closer uh, quarter maps um you know it's more viable then the mp40 this gun is another gun that good close range um can can melt sometimes can have long range dominance like it can it can you can map people with this gun <laughs> but the issue is the recoil very weird pattern it's a very weird like sideways like side like side to side pattern and you can it's it's just difficult man it's difficult to control these patterns sometimes the ppsh very simple it, it kicks up a little bit very little bit to the side to the right and you just you just simply you know pull it down a little bit a little bit to the left like it's a very very easy easy recoil to 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 control you know these two are just a little bit more crazier a little bit harder to control and due to that it's it's a little bit more consistent so PBSH, just a better gun overall. If you want to be the best player and be the most consistent player you can be, usually you want to run this gun. So I have three PPSHs, as you can see here. Airborne, D, D division, you want to run nine out of ten times on a sub. You get the suppressor, doesn't really matter much. Sprint for longer distances, obviously really effective. You can climb over obstacles factor, faster, <laughs> which can be a factor sometimes. It's very situational, but it can help in certain things when you're climbing up, trying to climb up to a building faster, trying to rush someone, maybe like hop out, hop in the window quick. It can be a factor. And then you have increased sprint speed, which I think is one of the most important things. Armored is something you can use, but from my experience, I'd rather use Airborne and Hunker. Oh, let me show you. Airborne and Hunker, which is basically flag jacket, like I mentioned earlier. I think that's just a more efficient way of using it. I think as a sub, Airborne is almost a necessity and it's just really effective, and it's probably the best performance you will get if you use Airborne. Armored, basically flag jacket division. Um, you can use it if you maybe want to use Armored instead with Energetic, which is basically like Airborne. I mean, all it does is help you sprint uh, faster. So you, as soon as you're off sprint, you get to sprint again sooner. And then no falling from no damage from falling, which isn't really going to be that much of a factor. But this is another combination you can use. But in my in my opinion, Airborne is just a better one you should be using. That increased sprint speed is just really, really good. So you got these two. So basically, you're going to see very similar classes through all of these three. So we got Airborne with Energetic. This is basically a rush class. Good for a start of a hard point. You need to get to a hill really fast. It's very far. Maybe off. Maybe you, you, you know, you just died and you're rotating to another hill and it's very far. And you want to get to the rotation faster. Maybe pull out this class. It can be very situational. But this is definitely a good rushing class, basically in the class to get around the map very quick. Like this map is it's super quick, energetic and airborne, just a good combination. It's basically, it's basically lightweight and like marathon, you know, sort of like that sort of combo. Then of course you got Prime, like I mentioned earlier, very, very good, very good for gunning people. Just you barely flinch, has that third attachment. Usually in the sub, all you really need is quick draw and grip. Now in the sub, I think quick draw is more effective and is more of a, necess a necessity. So you should always run that. You know, the, the AR does also have stock because of infantry. 
So like you just get to premium around corners and stuff like that. But for the sub, you need a, you know, you do need that quick draw. It just helps that extra little, you know, aim down sight when you're, you know, standing still or something can help you. And then of course I use primed. Uh, this is sort of like my slain class, airborne primed. In hardpoint, you're gonna get naded a lot. It's gonna happen. There's a lot of hills and a lot of maps that nades are a big factor. You're getting naded a lot. But you gotta learn which hills you can slay. Oh, uh, you can pull out this class. You gotta learn which maps you can sort of get away with like this sort of class pushing out cuts you know not being the hill as much you know being aggressive in people's faces there are certain maps and certain hills from my experience that i've been playing i've been playing this game a lot lately a lot a lot and i know you know there are certain hills and certain maps so you can get away with this class and it's a very very good and effective class so this is more of a slain class and i put on advanced rally filling aka long barrel which is very effective uh it can help it's not the craziest thing but obviously, from like those medium to long range gunfights, sometimes like versus an AR, it can really help you uh, secure that kill and not struggle so much since AR is like the bar. It can be really dominant from, dominant from that range. Then, of course, I got the machine pistol. Now, for these three, I have uh, steady aim. I'm just trying out steady aim. Uh, extended mags, like I said, is good. But steady aim, you know, with the sub, you should either you should always finish the guy or have him one shot. At that point, I just need 10 bullets, right? If I miss all 10 bullets, then I kind of suck. So I don't really need extended mags. Steady aim is really good. You can probably easily hit fire the guy. And then of course I run the the sticky grenade, and then this is the same thing. The only difference is I have hunker on this class. Hunker, like I said, it's a flak jacket, very very good for uh, hard point mainly. Um, back to what, before I continue, energetic. This class is really good for CTF and maybe gridiron. Just allows you to sprint through the map really quick. You grab the flag, you're zooming out. It's a very good efficient class. This class mainly for hard point, very very effective in hard point. You know, you it's hard for you to die from nades all the time, and you're fat. You're still fast. You're still going around the map pretty quickly because of airborne. And these are basically my three subclasses that I use only. Sometimes here and there, I'll switch for the Thompson. And all I use in the Thompson is basically the same thing. Quick draw, um, grip. And if maybe if I use, like, let's say a, a, a kill whore class like Prime. Where's Prime that? I'll either put extended mags, which can be really helpful because the Thompson runs out of ammo pretty quick since it shoots fast. Or steady aim. Steady aim, uh, it's crazy. You get to hit fire so many kills. Or advanced rifling if you feel like you need that, that extra range. So this is another good class you can run with the Thompson. Um, but you can experiment with some stuff. These are the most efficient classes, in my opinion, and the best classes at this moment. Uh, in the near future, people are going to start throwing stuns probably. You're going to probably have to run a different basic training um, to block those stuns. And maybe we're going to have to run, you know, hard, like armored and, you know, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a little bit different in the future. But as of right now, these are the best classes, the most effective classes. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I will probably be doing an SD class setup as well because I know a lot of you guys have been asking me that as well. And, you know, I want to help you guys out. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something new and hopefully helped you out. Went a little bit in depth. Hopefully it wasn't too long, but hope you guys got a good understanding and really learned a lot today. And I'm out. Peace.